So talking about the chart of Donald Trump, how does he keep getting away with what he keeps getting away with? And how is it going to show up in the 2020 election? Check this out. Hey, folks, I have the chart of Donald Trump here, and we're going to talk about why it is that he always seems to get away with what he gets away with. What is it about him and his chart that shows he seems to be able to emerge unscathed? Um, and where does that lead going forward? And I also have some recent, you know, especially a very important recent transit that's going to give us a lot of insight into the election night of November 3rd, 2020. So we can take a look at this. And I wanted to just do this special video um, before I do a final prediction, 2020 prediction, um, because, you know, it's a very complicated subject. Um, and right now, Donald Trump is the president. And so he has a, you know, he has a record. He has a history that we can really look at. And you know, again, bear in mind, this is an astrology case study. Um, people get all triggered now because of politics and whatnot. And I get that. And I'm just going to be looking at events. There might be some of my personal opinions in here. Um, again, most of it's just going to be things that we have all seen and all observed. Like, for example, he was impeached. Literally, that process happened. He has been indicted. Um, in court. In fact, his lawyer is serving time. He's an unindicted co-conspirator in two election crimes. These, these things happened. Again, so I'm going to just speak about these things matter-of-factly, and if you get triggered by that, you might want to not watch the video. Either way, um, I'm going to talk about how these things work as well as look at some transits from his past, you know, like years ago. In fact, the last time Saturn was in transit where it is now was very surprising. And again, these are all a matter of public record. And you can see that I have his chart here um, on the screen in front of us. And you can see that I have some dates up here. And I want to actually go and, and, and look at some of these dates up here, particularly, um, well, actually, let me start with the present because I already have the chart up here. And I want to want you to notice something that just recently happened. Um, you see recently the moon transiting through the 10th house. That would be Trump's 10th house. You see Trump has a Leo ascendant, Mars in the first, and moon going over this section of his chart. This is actually, oh, this is 813. Let me move this forward. Sorry. I was looking at the last time it went through, which wasn't so 12. Okay, so I'm going to go back and then about a week. So this is election day. Election day is this day right here. So this is early in the morning on November 3rd. If we move this forward um, like several hours as election night, this is like, okay, the San Diego, California, this would be 530. So this is like, um, you know, no, 630. This is like 930 p.m. Washington, D.C. time, 1030 p.m. So the evening of election day is going to be the moon is passing from Rohini Nakshatra to Mrigashira Nakshatra on election day. You can see starts around the middle of the day. It goes into, into Mrigashira. It starts in Rohini. And if we look in Trump's chart, he's got his Rahu and sun there. So this is quite significant that on election day, um, this transit of the moon is going to be right in Donald Trump's 10th house. By the way, it'll be in Biden's seventh house. So this is often seen as a favorable transit, of course. The moon is said to give a lot of favor um, to whichever house it's transiting through. Um, and again, on election night, it's going to go through Trump's 10th house. But let's take a look at something that just happened. Um, now, this is September the 9th. We just had, and I was paying close attention on this transit, and I was pretty surprised when we woke up that day. And this was the recent transit through on September the 9th, the same place the moon is going to be on election day. Look at what happened on this day recently. September the 9th, 2020, this was the day that that Bob Woodward expose 
hit the news. Bob Woodward um, released all these tapes of Donald Trump saying that he knew about the, you know, the seriousness of COVID, um, you know, behind the scenes, but then publicly he was saying, oh, you know, it'll just disappear. It'll magically disappear and ridiculing people wearing masks and saying as early as, you know, early April, oh, everybody, you know, get back to normal. We have to get back to normal. Meanwhile, he knew behind the scenes how deadly it was, saying it's deadly, deadly, deadly. But he wasn't saying that publicly. He was encouraging people to not take it so seriously. He says it's because he didn't want to make everyone panic. But again, this is the job of a leader, is to not downplay something like this and put people in danger. And the response to the COVID has not been anywhere near as good as other countries. We still have about 1,000 deaths per day. So this is a very difficult issue for him. Again, his supporters, it doesn't matter. They're going to support him no matter what. But it was very damning. Um, and again, it's really been kind of, t um, you know, a very recent uh, sort of damning expose it came out on September the 9th, very recently when the moon went through his 10th house, which is where it's going to be on election day. So again, this is one of the things that astrologers do to do research. You go and look, and and I have all these dates over here that are, that are going to be fascinating also to see. Um, the last time Saturn was here in the sky, especially when it was a little bit later, this is when all of his bankruptcies started. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the chart back and show you that which again is really indicative of right now how difficult these transits are for him historically. Um, again, starting with the moon very recently. And if we go back several years, the last time Saturn was transiting through here is when he had all these bankruptcies. So again, this is the way we, we analyze how transits affect someone. We do research. But I want to also get... You know, before I move too much more into the transits, what I do want to talk about here is what I said at the beginning. Why does he seem to be able to get away with things that other people cannot get away with? It's pretty remarkable. Again, um, he, he's been indicted. He's an unindicted co-conspirator in two election crimes. Again, if he wasn't president and if he didn't have a sympathetic special prosecutor, special, you know, special prosecutor, Bob Mueller, Bob Mueller could have decided to indict him. He could have put forth indictments against Trump. There is no law that says you can't indict a sitting president. It's just a convention. It's just a norm. And Bob Mueller decided to honor that norm and make, you know, and sort of declare the president is above the law. He's an unindicted co-conspirator in a crime where his lawyer is in jail. Two crimes. Michael Cohen is in jail for paying hush money, bribery, essentially, federal election crime. And he, the person he was doing it on behalf of is the president running the country, right? Again, how in the world does that happen? Not only that, but his party, the Republican Party, says nothing about it. You never hear him talk about it. Trump. Again, he never released his taxes. These are the kinds of things that would sink other politicians, yet nothing happens to him. Again, he was impeached, and he was impeached for real reasons. He literally, obviously, and clearly leaned on the leader of another country to withhold money that we allocated for them. He said, you're not getting the money unless you go public with this frankly, phony story that you're investigating Joe Biden, who's my likely political opponent. Trump said, unless you do that, unless you go on TV or make an announcement, you're not going to get the money that the Congress legally allocated to you. And the head of Ukraine was about to do it until, and then the whistleblower came out and exposed it, and then they released the money. But he was, in, he was impeached for this and for obstructing justice, for not letting any witnesses testify. And he got away with it. 
It, it doesn't mean he didn't do the stuff. He did it. <laughs> it's very clear to anyone who watched that he did these things. But he didn't get impeached. And these, these things are 10 times worse than what Nixon did. Nixon had one line on one tape where he said, where he wanted to use the FBI to stop the CIA. I think it was, or CIA to stop the FBI. That's what it was from investigating Watergate. And that one thing was enough. And all of his party, they all said, that's it. You got to leave. Unprecedented that someone can do this many wrong deeds and still not have to pay the price and suffer the penalty. And again, let's take a look at what in this chart shows this. And it's a very powerful, I've never seen one this strong. It's the simple Vipreet Raja Yoga. The Vipreet Raja Yoga is a, it's a principle that says that when you get the ruler of what are called Dushtana houses in each other's house, when the rulers go into each other's houses, they remove the problem of that house. So it means we have three difficult houses, Dushtana houses, the sixth, the eighth and the 12th houses are Dushtana houses. Their rulers bring difficulty. And when they go in each other's houses, it can remove the difficulty or destroy the difficulty or destroy the enemies or some version of it. And we can see in Trump's chart, he's got an incredibly powerful Vipreet Raj Yoga, I'll make this a little bigger, Again, this is his chart here. It's a Leo ascendant with Mars in the first. You see that really combative nature right on his ascendant. And Saturn is the sixth house ruler. The sixth house is one of the Dushtana house houses. He rules that sixth house and it goes into the 12th house. The sixth house ruler, Saturn, is in the 12th house. So what this means is that enemies, competitors, People you're battling with, which is sixth house, they wind up minimized. They wind up disappearing. You wind up making them go away. Again, the 12th house is where things sort of disappear. It's not just they disappear. You wind up making them disappear. You wind up minimizing them. You, they wind up being also very weak or feeble or old or unpopular, or unwilling to fight with you. Again, the sixth house is the fight. When someone has a strong enemy, then you will see where their competitors and their enemies don't just disappear. They wind up unwilling or unable to fight, and they wind up disappearing. We can see this so profoundly since Trump has been president. And again, you know, I've been watching it. And first of all, you know, some of the first things that that happened, well, first we have to go back to the 2016 election. Let's not forget. And again, this is just a very simple matter of fact. He lost the popular vote by 3 million votes. Okay. Nowhere, nothing unambiguous about that. Even though he lost by 3 million votes, he managed to squeak out a victory. Again, he managed to squeak out this victory in three states by 77,000 votes in three states because of our arcane electoral college and election laws. So again, this in itself shows this hidden, unusual, bizarre way to, quote, win and prevail against your enemy. However, he also had a very weak enemy. I would say this without any fear of hesitation, but if Donald Trump would have want, run against Barack Obama for president, or even if he would have run against, let's say, Mitt Romney or um, Newt Gingrich, like in 2012, if Trump would have run in 2012, he would have never prevailed. They were both very strong competitors. Mitt Romney was, again, he lost to... Barack Obama, but Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich, Donald Trump on the stage with those guys during the primaries, they would have ripped him apart. The thing that was fascinating to me in 2016 with the Republican primaries was none of these, none of his competitors would take him on. I would sit there and pull my hair out. Like they would have these debates or whatever, and they would just let Trump walk all over them. 
Again, this wouldn't have happened if it would have been Mitt Romney or Newt Gingrich. They were strong competitors. Mitt Romney would have. I mean, you saw Mitt Romney came out in 2015, uh, 2016 election. He wasn't even in the race. And he came out and just ripped into Donald Trump. Again, if they would have been debating and Trump would have had a strong competitor, even just one, if one of those guys would have been strong, he wouldn't have. I don't think he would have got the nomination. And then he runs against a very weak Hillary Clinton, probably the most unpopular person, not as unpopular as him. She won by 3 million votes, but unpopular enough to push the voter turnout down. And by the way, she got the same percentage that Barack Obama did, even in those states, but the turnout was lower. The turnout was lower in the districts that Obama won that allowed him to win Pennsylvania, Michigan, and um, Wisconsin, Hillary Clinton won those districts. There, there are Republican and Democratic districts, and Hillary Clinton won those districts by the same margin that Obama did, but the voter turnout was so low because she had no enthusiasm. This is where the election was actually lost, because that's where Democrats run up the vote count in the, in the, in this, in the urban areas, like in Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, or whatever, where they're more liberal, but whereas Barack Obama maybe got 70,000, you know, won by like 70,000 votes in those areas, Hillary Clinton maybe only won by 30,000. So it, it, she was a weak competitor. So this weakness, in spite of all of his mistakes and bombast and misinformation and inability, you know, he's just not articulate, he's not clued up on issues. He lost all of the debates by every measurable standard. He just wasn't, he's not clued in to policies. And again, we've never seen a figure like this who doesn't even bother to learn or be prepared about issues. How does this guy keep winning? <laughs> it's crazy, right? So he got a very, relatively speaking, a very weak competitor in Hillary Clinton as well. And again, even though she got 3 million more votes, because the Electoral College is what you need to win, the voter turnout was really low. She didn't generate the enthusiasm to be able to overcome the Electoral College deficit. And again, this is shown in this, this, this loss. So the competitor, the sixth house ruler, is in the 12th house where the vote just kind of, where, where the margin of victory sort of disappears and sort of dissipates. I, and the other thing to note, the uh, and and there's also a reason for it. And 12th House things have to do with, and this is where Trump supporters aren't going to like it, but sorry, I got to be honest, but it has to do with things like lying and cheating and deception and perhaps fraud. And this is relative to this upcoming election because he's already doing things that are very 12th house to try to win. And he might, which means making up things about voter fraud, doing things like making post office sorting machines and mailboxes disappear, making his competitors disappear. <laughs> Literally, they sort of disappear. And what I mean by competitors, I mean the whole Republican Party at this point. They would, not, they would generally be allies, but they've been so complicit in so many of the things that he's done. Again, the reason Nixon was impeached and removed from office is because the Republicans said, we can't stomach this anymore. This is not good for the country. You can't do this. We now have a president who stands up and daily undermines the integrity of our elections, which he is entrusted to ensure. That's his job. Not a word from Republicans, hardly a word from Democrats. They just let him do it. because. They're afraid of what he's going to say, you know, to some extent, or afraid of getting attacked on Twitter or something. And in many cases, a lot of the lies that he will put forth about them, he has no problem just saying, making up anything. Again, I know Trump supporters don't like to hear this, but, you know, Ted Kennedy's father assassinated J JFK, right? Or promoting conspiracy theories promote anything. It doesn't matter. He'll, ma he'll make up anything. He says anything. He has no 
filter about whether something is true or not. It's simply whether or not it's going to help him win. And this is all 12th house stuff. 12th house is lying, confusion, miscommunication, misdirection, all of the like, well, what about that? Well, what about that? This is also what helps him defeat his competitors. Again, this is this classic sixth Lord in the 12th and never seen it play out like this before. And the reason it's also so so important and relevant to the election is he's in the Dasha right now. And we have seen this in the last year, year and a half. I said when Jupiter Saturn Dasha started, things were going to get really serious and really change. And I thought, in fact, I said it at the time that he would get impeached. Whether he would get removed from office, I didn't know, but he would get impeached. I didn't even think it would be because of the uh, you know, because of the Ukraine, it would be maybe Mueller or something, but Jupiter Saturn was very hard. And I said, he might not survive this. I, I, I did a video when it started, when Jupiter Saturn started and literally this exact day, I think it was January 3rd or whatever. The, this is the day that the squad and the, all the people that were elected from the 2018 midterms, the blue wave or whatever, and all of the women that were voted in during the 2018 midterm, I believe this was the exact day that they were sworn in or it was not long after, which means this was the time when Nancy Pelosi all of a sudden had all this power. And again, since Nancy Pelosi had all this power at the beginning of 2019, it's been a very different Donald Trump. The Democrats were in charge. The Democrats started having hearings about certain things. Again, when the Republicans were in charge of the House, the first couple of years of Trump's presidency with Paul Ryan, nothing, he, they, he was totally unaccountable. Jupiter Saturn, immediately, he was now going to be held to account. And again, it's Jupiter Saturn. Saturn is the sixth house ruler, as I said. So the consequences come out, but he doesn't lose. He doesn't suffer the final penalty. It doesn't mean that the stuff doesn't come out. It means it doesn't ruin him or destroy him. Just like, for example, all the bankruptcies. Let's look at his history of bankruptcies. The same kind of thing. What do you think a bankruptcy is? Well, what it is, is your creditors wind up really getting the shaft. And he winds up, you know, it's not personal bankruptcy. He still has personal money and all like that. He managed to learn how to shield himself from personal devastation, but professional devastation. Let's be clear. Again, if you are living in the world and in the illusion that bankrupting six, especially bankrupting casinos, which are nothing but cash cows, no one bankrupts a casino, for God's sake. It's about the most, if you wanted to, you know, if you want to procure the overhead, it's one of the most stable businesses you'll find is, is a casino. No one chooses and says, I think I'll go bankrupt six times. No, it's a failure, abject failure. But what bankruptcy laws do is shield the person who goes bankrupt. So again, it's the same quality of the sixth house lord and the twelfth. He winds up losing, like getting impeached or getting humiliated. Also, like you see now in the public, and I'll look at how since the beginning of 2019, he's just been pummeled. Go back and look. Again, even though he's not in jail or hasn't been removed or anything like that, look at how under attack he is for all of his past mistakes and all of that. It's very clear. He just doesn't suffer the final result. And the same thing happened. We're going to go look at these dates here and look at the last time that Saturn went through. I'm going to go back, go back 10 years here a couple of times. So here's the, here's the transit chart right here. And this is his chart. So we're going to go back 10, 20 years. We'll go, now we'll run it back. Well, let's go back another 10 years. It's here. Now let's go forward a couple of years. So this is the last time that Saturn went through Capricorn. Boom, boom. Okay, so this is 1992, right? 
1991, this is when Trump started having bankruptcies. Summer of 1991, his bankruptcies started. It's the summer of 1991. So let's go back a month or so and look. This is the summer of 19. I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to find exact dates, but look at where Saturn is. The last time Saturn went through the sixth house, this is when all his bankruptcies started. Now, again, we can look at this a couple of ways. You could say that doesn't bode very well for him. And it doesn't because, again, this is when all his bankruptcies started. Before that, he was burning money like it's going out of style. Getting creditors to float him credit. Again, buying up all kinds of stuff, thinking there won't be any, any uh, consequences. But they, the consequences came to roost in the summer of 1991. Then by March of 1992, you really started to see them. So the first bankruptcy was the Taj Mahal in the summer of 1991. Then by March 1992, <clears throat> if we go forward around here, as Saturn moved further away and start to separate further, uh, you know, again, this is 1957. Currently in the sky, Saturn is about two degrees. So as Saturn started to move further away in further through Capricorn, you saw the consequences of the bad decisions really come home. To roost, the bad business decisions. The first one, the Taj Mahal, in the summer 1991, Saturn was pretty close to where it is now. Again, this is, if it's July, then it's it's about 10 degrees and going retrograde back. Right now, though, Saturn is about two degrees. So again, the previous time when Saturn was two degrees, he didn't hit the bankruptcies yet. He was still spending the money and still trying to, and still, and not, not, like when Saturn was about here, which would have been January of 1991, which would have been a few months before, he was still having a lot of trouble, but the bankruptcies didn't start to hit until later, until about eight or nine months later. Now, this is important if you're looking to do a prediction, because when we have the election, that's the time we're looking at with Saturn in early Capricorn. At this, at the last time Saturn was at early Capricorn, he hadn't started with the bankruptcies yet. The Saturn was about here. This is January 1991. S seven months later, and then at least about a year later, it started to get severe. So if we would just take that example and move it into these times now, it shows the extreme duress that he's under. Absolutely. With Saturn going back to this place where he had all these bankruptcies. And by the way, this ruined his business career. He couldn't get any credit from Western banks. Why well, I say Western, from American banks or shareholders after this. And instead, he had to rely on Deutsche Bank, which is a which is a German bank that's been in all kinds of trouble for money laundering and things like that and all of the shady business deals with Russian with like Russian oligarchs and whatnot and, and these are clearly the reasons why he doesn't want anyone to see his taxes and again I'm just going to make this as a general statement if you're a Trump supporter you probably don't like to hear this but you know damn well that if his finances were on the up and up and especially if they showed that he made 10 billion dollars or whatever it is that he brags about that he would show it this man loves nothing more than to show something and brag, be able to brag about it. He hides his taxes like nothing else. He is he hides his taxes like nothing else. And there are many reasons why they try to go after his taxes simply because we want to know if he's beholden to anyone. It should be a law that the president should have to show their taxes, I think. But aside from that, um, what happened when he when he did all these bankruptcies back in the early 90s, especially these big three, Taj Mahal summer of 91, then March of 92, then later in 92. And again, I'll just run this forward. As you see, later in 92, Saturn, Saturn, you know, Saturn goes later into um, 
into Capricorn. That was really the origin of the events where his where his whole business life and his whole um you know approach to being this real this hotel magnate and thinking he was going to have this big empire especially of casinos and whatnot started to change and his whole business model had to start changing especially with his financing so what that leaves us with now is you know he also had a couple other bankruptcies because I think he pro he probably saw how it doesn't hurt him so much, it hurts others. It doesn't hurt him that much. He said, I use the bankruptcy laws. It's actually smart business. Well, smart for him, as long as he can get people to what he would, might call a sucker, to believe him and give him money. Well, I just, if I go bankruptcy, it's your money that gets really destroyed. His credit gets destroyed, but not necessarily his money. Creditors don't like when you go bankrupt. That's the last thing they want. But again, what, what we wind up seeing here, though, and the main point of this is just to talk about a few of the, of the prevailing issues before, you know, as I'm looking at who might win the election or whatnot. I've done several videos on this because it's a deep subject. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to do a video that's like five hours long and talk about all of this. So I'm chunking it down into things that I find pretty fascinating. And, of course, Trump is fascinating in this regard. And what the election, I think, is really coming down to more than anything else, and again, brace yourself if you're a Trump supporter, is the way I'm seeing it so far and the way I see it now is that you, it, it's, What's becoming pretty clear, especially in polling, uh, um, that's been very consistent the entire time. There's not been any, hardly any wavering. I expect the polling to close and to get tighter, but I, it looks so much like Biden has just an, a, a lead in, in the vote, at least at this point. Of course, all of that could change, but some of the leads are very high. Like I think the ones that look like they could swing the election out, Arizona, Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin, they're more than five, six points. Now, again, you could say, well, Hillary Clinton was up by about that much. Actually, it was less. And those margins in 2016 were much more volatile. For example, Trump would be leading at some point by, um, um, you know, Hillary Clinton would be leading. They go back and forth. These have been consistent all the way through. I'm going to do another video where I show how to do research on these things because it's not based on the news. And people often like to give me a hard time because they think I'm basing this on Fox News or CNN or something. And I'm not. I'm looking at polling data and astrology. But I'll do another thing on that. But what it's looking like to me is it's going to come down to what I think Biden is going to win. Definitely. He'll definitely win the popular vote. I think he's going to also win the Electoral College vote. But what we're going to have is this delay because they're going to be mail-in votes, counting votes, and Trump is going to, one way or another, like if he's a, if, if it looks like he's ahead on election night, he's going to declare victory and say, that's it. I won. I won. I won. And get everybody worked up. All his supporters worked up and say, stop counting the votes because it's all fake anyway. I already won. I won. I won. And try to foment hysteria this way. If it looks like he's losing, if, if he's losing on election night, then he'll say, wait, we got to count all the votes, got to count all the votes. And no matter what happens, he'll wind up contesting it. Um, no matter what happens, he's not, go he's going to contest it. I don't think there's, I can't imagine a scenario where he's going to say, okay, I lost fair and square. Yeah, I don't see it. And it's a matter of whether or not this sixth Lord in the 12th, whether he can get away with it. That's what I think. Um, whether or not he can get away with that. Again, in 2016, he lucked into it because he lost by every metric, at least as far, not every metric, but by the popular vote, for sure, and he squeaked out the Electoral College victory. I'm not going to get into voter suppression and other things that happened in some states, but he won by, by, by the Electoral College. I don't think this year that's going to happen. This is my preliminary. Again, I'm going to do a final analysis where I bring a lot of this stuff together, but it looks to me like... Also, because this is how Trump wins anyway. He loses and winds up winning. He winds up losing and not paying the consequences because of this Viparit Raja Yoga, this sixth lord in the 12th. 
his competitors somehow lose or go away or again, because of some kind of trickery or deception. And by the way, let me talk a little bit about what happened in 2016 as well, relative to this. Maybe you don't watch the news as much or, or you don't keep up with the events, but Hillary Clinton in 2016 was savaged by the FBI. It's, it's incredible how this narrative has shifted because we've had Trump talking about this now for three or four years, how Comey was against him, the FBI was against him, everybody was against him. That ain't what happened in 2016. Trump was under investigation by the FBI. His, 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 his campaign was, for good reason, because of all of the people that were associating with, with uh, the Russians. But they never told the citizens. People of the, of the U.S. never knew this. That was a huge advantage for Trump, especially because the director of the FBI twice incriminated, almost indicted Hillary Clinton in the court of public opinion. First coming out with a statement that she didn't, that her emails weren't a big deal, but it was highly inappropriate and just went after her, which again made, made her look terrible. And then two weeks before, 10 days before voting, comes out and says, we have to look at more emails and we don't know what's going on. Unprecedented. Not just putting your thumb on the scale, but like kicking her in the face. Unprecedented. Now, again, I'm these are just things that happen, whether you were watching or not or paying attention or not. Hillary Clinton saw about a six-point national lead change to about two or three or get almost even right after that second thing happened. Her lead evaporated with 10 days left because the director of the FBI came out and said, we're not sure what's going on, but we have to look at more emails. Her lead went completely in the toilet. And then he came out three days before and said, oh, it was really nothing after all. Well, then why did you say something? Again, I'm not bringing this up because of grievance. I'm bringing this up because this is an example of six Lord in the 12th. Even other people go after your enemies and your enemies get destroyed, again, even by other people. Donald Trump did nothing to earn that. Not only did her, his enemy, Hillary Clinton, get savaged by the FBI, but the, at the same time, the FBI were legitimately investigating his campaign because Paul Manafort was a known international, I don't want to say criminal at the time, but pretty close to it, um, who was helping the Ukrainians involved with the Russian. And I, I, the whole campaign, you know, Trump coming out and saying, hey, Russia, release your emails. They had to look into it. And the Obama administration knew it, and they, would, and they didn't say anything. No one said anything in the 2016 election. They held it back. Again, what if we would have known that then? What if we would have known that their campaign, that, that Trump's campaign was being investigated? Would that have changed 70,000 votes in three states? That's the only reason he won. Again, I'm just saying that these, are matter, these are data points. These are matters of fact, not opinion, fact. These happened. And this shows the sixth Lord and the twelfth. This is what it looks like. Again, this is an astrology update, an astrology lesson. And you can see it. I, this Vipreet Rajyoga for him is the craziest ever. You've never seen anyone, you know, have so many things go right when they when he does so much wrong. We've never had a candidate come and say, "Russia, you have her emails, send it to us." And his son meets with Russian, you know, moles in in Trump Tower, and he hires Paul Manafort, and you know, Roger Stone gets convicted. Um, all of these people are trying to work out these timed releases. He has WikiLeaks and other organizations working on his behalf. You know, Vladimir Putin trying to destroy his enemy. All these people trying to destroy Hillary Clinton. She still gets three, three million more votes, but he squeaks through and winds up doing it. So again, my point right now is that we see the same kinds of tendencies happening now. He's far behind. Again, he could naturally close the gap, but 
And who knows what can happen? And I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm saying he could do it. <laughs> but this is how I think he would do it. I don't think he's going to get some electoral. I don't think he's going to get some popular vote victory. No way. Electoral college, maybe. But he's already prepared. And he's already preparing everyone for this idea that the only way I can win is if it's rigged. He's already said it. He said it 10 times by now. And again, what other president can get away with saying that and not have everybody's head exploding, including his own party, right? But again, one of the things is he, he softens everyone up because it's so, such a deluge that you're just kind of in a miasma. You're just kind of in a fog of all the stuff that he says. But this is how he wins. And part of it, again, also it's the sixth Lord and the twelfth. Again, it's one thing to say lying. It's another thing to say confusing you. He confuses his enemies. Again, very much the twelfth house is about confusion as well. I said lying, but it's also lying and making things up to just confuse the issue so that we don't know what's going on now. This is how he also defeats his enemies. When I said lying, again, that's that's a blatant act, but it's saying things that will confuse people so that you're not sure what's real. And again, if you're not sure what's real, then six and one half dozen the other, lesser of two evils is still evil. Who knows? Try to smear and confuse. And then maybe you won't pay so much attention to what I know or what I don't know or what I've done. And so again, we're going to see this and uh, we are seeing it. We're already seeing it. And so this sixth Lord and the 12th is so powerful for him and he could win, win this way. And one of the biggest things that I'm, that I'm, that I'm weighing right now is will that work? And again, this, these kinds of issues are really tricky making these kinds of predictions because it's not a simple thing. Like if it's a, if it's a, you know, something like a, like a sporting event and you're trying to predict who wins and who loses there's a very simple formula at the end who scored the most points, they win here. You know, you can't really fault people for saying that Hillary Clinton would win in 2016. She got more votes, but she didn't win. Again, you're looking to see who's going to prevail, but someone can prevail by stealing it, by confusing, by doing other things that they wind up being, quote, the winner. And so in this situation, to me, it's more like, do I think at the end of what's going to happen, this Viparit Raj Yoga, the Sixth Lord and the Twelfth, is going to be strong enough to after all these tactics or whatever actually work. Now, again, I'm going to look into it a little bit more for sure, because there are other things involved also, which have to do with um, the chart of the U S I'm going to look further and more deeply into the dashes and also the transits um, and do a final and do a final analysis. Um, but I wanted to do this specifically about Donald Trump's Vipari Raj Yoga and how we already see it. And again, remember, this is an astrology update. Okay. And um, these are charged issues. And, um, but it's just really fascinating to have already seen this play out this way and this anomaly. Like, you know, because people are always like, oh, it's that Rahu. It's that, it's not just Rahu. Rahu in the 10th, eh, you know, that's not enough to do all of this. Why does this guy do things that are literally criminal that we see that no one else could have gotten away with? And he winds up not having to pay the price for it or suffer the consequences for it. So I wanted to do this and show not only that, but also some recent shifts and transits. And I was especially looking and I was, I'm, I'm watching to see that these transits of the moon uh, through his, um, you know, through his 10th house as well, because this is going to be very important going forward because uh, this is going to be, move this back. Oh, where are we at? This is going to be um, a. This is going to be the chart of the 
of election night. It's the third. It's this day right here with the moon is like in Rohini. And again, we just saw it happen. Let's see what happens on on the next time that it goes through, which will be like around September, um, October 10th or something. They have their first debate. The moon is in Pisces. I looked at it and I'm going to be doing a few more updates here as well so we can see what's going on. But again, to me, these are astrology updates. The politics are a big part of it, of course. I'm just reporting what I see. Um, and uh, I also want to just say this last thing. I think no matter what, we're going to survive. I think the rhetoric is so charged. You know, if Trump wins, it's the end of the country or Biden or whatever. You know, everybody needs to chill out, I think. Um, and um, I'll just leave that there. But this Vipri Raj Yoga is so powerful. So I think what's going to happen is Biden is going to at least win the popular vote. Um, I think he will probably prevail in the Electoral College as well after all the votes are counted. This is how it's looking now. But regardless, Trump isn't going to accept the results. This is what I think is going to happen. Um, as I said, I think if it looks like he's remotely ahead on election night, he'll just say, oh, I won. I won. All this counting of manly ballots is phony. Of course, if he's losing on election night, he'll say, oh, wait and count. Let's count. Let's wait and count. Let's wait. And then as they're counting, it's phony. It's phony. Again, he's already said the only way he can lose is if it's rigged. Again, it's his job to make sure it's not rigged. That an irony that seems to be lost on everybody. So, again, I think it's going to be extremely divisive for our country regardless. But, again, I also think we're kind of overstating it's not going to be the end of the world. And I'll have more updates on this going forward, particularly as I look at things like the transits of Election Day, the two Dasha side by side on those day um, on that on that day at the time and also the chart of the U.S. Um, and so that'll be um, at least the final video that I'll do. I may do another update here soon, also just talking about the state of the race um, and how I do research and whatnot, like I said before. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. 